Yeah, but you know they are self-sufficient now. Um, you know, when so we it is like a case study that uh, you started off and then they became self-sufficient. So is it the only instance that, that you can No, not with? at not at all. I mean, we we did this. Uh, this was all under this banner of family life and community development. It started off as a five-year project, but then from there, you know, it, there were so many like offshoots, and we had this project. You know, we had this work continuing. You know, going into other. You know, uh, basically based on the needs of the time. Um, and in each of these communities, we also, whenever we started up a community, started developing it, um, you know, we also s sort of started up a little preschool for children. Um, of those preschools, again, there's, you know, and but once they became self-sufficient, un until they became self-sufficient, we ran it. But after that, they took over. And we had, uh, in total, we developed 21 areas around the country, you know, from, uh, and of those, we like have Kadavata. Uh, Kadavata was one, but we also had uh, in in Vellavatta was another. You know where we we developed the slum and shanties, and in fact we won an international uh, award for that, the Olive Award for continuous con uh, community service. It was won won by uh, one of our senior guide companies. Uh, it, it was called the Slum and Shanty Upliftment uh, Project. Um, and a little anecdote also is, you know, we, we had to, uh, funding has always been a problem for the association. And when we were with difficulty, when we were trying to develop that area, again, we had a community hall there which we were trying to develop. And um, we raised approximately 100,000 uh, for the community hall, uh, to build the community hall. Um, and uh, then we, you know, we, we, were, we, were, we were struggling. So then what we did was the chief commissioner at that time, uh, Mrs. Uh, Gamageshi, wrote to uh, the government. And um, uh, this well, was when? Uh, this was in the 1980s. And uh, she wrote to the government. And um, uh, Mr. Premadasa, at that, I mean, he was not president at that time, uh, but he was uh, working for the government. And apparently he's reported to have said, you know, this letter came to him saying, you know, explaining the situation. And he's reported to have said that, uh, said, match the grant. He said, they are trying to do what we should be doing. You know, we have to support them. Let's, uh, you know, they've raised 100,000. We'll match it, give them another 100,000. And that's how we put up the community hall. Um, now that area is self-sufficient. So, you know, we are out of it again. But, you know, when we started, you know, they were also very suspicious of us. You know, when you go into these communities, they wonder, you know, these bunch of women coming and girls, young girls, you know, what are they? Are they going to invade? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we had things like, you know, health and nutrition was a problem. So we had like soup kitchens. Um, and um, initially, you know, they were, uh, they, they didn't want to, they were suspicious. They didn't even want to try the, we had like cola candy and things like that. They didn't, they didn't want to try. Then we had to stand in line and actually taste it. And with that, then, you know, we had this like regularly, you know, everyone coming to, you know, joining in the, with the soup kitchen and, you know, and then with that, you know, uh, we started, that's, you know, yet another, you know, case study, if you like. So, Shalika, actually, this, this work is, I mean, actually, if you think of it for the development of the company, the country, it's uh, truly inspiring to hear this sort of, uh, because you have covered such a vast area from the differently able uh, people, community, to the prisons, family reunion, and s you name it, I think all <laughs> the areas are addressed in some way. And I want to uh, elaborate, I uh, want you to elaborate more on the fact that you referred to um, Pre Mr. Premadasa before he became the president also intervening and saying that this is the work that a government should do and we should support you in our max the maximum possible way because you are taking that initiative. I think that is a very valuable message for all of us because uh, as guides we know that we can't give our responsibility always to the government as individuals as citizens we have a responsibility and I think guides are exactly doing the similar task mm -hmm. so and you also mentioned the fact that you struggled at one point to build up this community center so that means that di directs us to the question as to how the girl guides association find funds to sort of contribute uh, mm, continuously to the development of the country and also go on with these projects. How do you find the funds and what sort of support do you get and what do you expect from the people like us, the general public and also the government? Uh, that's, that's quite a few questions. <laughs> um, well, I must say um, the government uh, is very supportive. Uh, we do have a government grant that uh, we get annually, but the thing is, um, you know that the more uh, quite a bit of it actually it goes on the edu 
goes to develop the educational program. And so we don't always, uh, we don't have funds left over for uh, projects. For projects, we have to look at, uh, you know, sort of uh, corporate funding. Um, or if we have, I mean, we do have donations uh, that come in as well. Um, and I mean, we, we really have to, and sometimes we have to hold our own fundraisers, you know, to try. I mean, fund, funding is, is the major uh, problem that uh, we face. Um, I mean, but I mean, because it's, uh, it's you know, it's, I suppose there's always something that one doesn't have. Um, I mean, we, we, ha we have the advantage that, you know, we have, I mean, we have over, we have guiding in all nine provinces of the country. We have over 35,000 members and we have, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I think we have got one, when, when it comes to girls, um, we have one of the largest networks. Uh, in the country and we really go down to grassroots level so we have that I mean that is an advantage for us in a big way when we when it comes to doing our projects um, it is the funding that we lack but so what we tend to do is also tie up with other organizations we have worked we worked for several years with UNICEF um, I mean at the moment we partner with something like a, about 20 other organizations at the moment. We worked um, up to December with the uh, Family Planning Association of Sri Lanka on um, HIV AIDS and adolescent health, that aspect of it. Um, there were, then we worked with the 3R. Um, we have um, worked with the other UN uh, agencies as well. And of course, we've had uh, private uh, sort of co uh, companies, you know, provide funds as well. And, um, and uh, in some cases, for example, when tsunami struck, uh, there were so many, you know, individuals you know, both in Sri Lanka as well as uh, abroad, because several of our members have gone abroad now, but so many people, and just the general public as well, actually, you know, sort of, um, sent, you know, giving us donations. And So is it uh, enough for you? Like, are you receiving an uh, influx of donations from the general public now? Um, no, I mean, it, at the moment, I mean, it, 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 the tsunami was a special case, I think, I, you know, I think, uh, because there, you know, people wanted to contribute and they just, you know, called up and, you know, um, and I think a lot of people knew we were doing a lot of work. In fact, that work that we started then is still continuing, um, you know, with that we, we started working with several. We took over the um, sort of Hambantara district and we, you know, went into it in a big way. And that work, we, we, we still continue. We still monitor those children, you know, and, and so that, that was a special instance where people were sort of volunteering. We, we do have from time to time, but it's more when we have a project, um, that uh, you know, or if another organization is interested in um, in starting up a project, but then they need the the manpower, as it were, and they need the network, they need the reach. Then you know they get in touch with us, and then we sort of partner them. Uh, but uh, there are there are still, having said that, lots of projects that we initiate that we like to work on and um, we we lack the funds so you know funding funding is key but um, there, there is a lot of uh, recognition and, and the government as you mentioned as well like I said we have the government grant but they also um, recognize uh, the association um, in terms of educational program I mean the highest award that a guide that age group of 12 to 17 the highest uh, award that they can get as a guide uh, is what we call the president's guide Right, one. so and Shalika, we will talk about that okay. because that is a topic in itself, isn't it? The President's Guide. We will take a small break and we will be back with you soon.